What is up, y'all? Welcome back. It's everybody's favorite video of the year, but it happens twice. The Sephora Savings Event recommendations video. Poof. Have we been through some makeup so far this year? And this is not restricted to this year. Something really cool about Sephora is that they have just diversified their offerings so much. They've kind of gotten a little experimental, I feel like, with the brands that are there. And I just have found things at Sephora that I'm more excited about in the last like six months than I remember being for a long time before that. So, oh, I should say, it starts on the 5th for VIB Rouge and then it opens to everyone on the 9th, I think. And this will not be the only Sephora savings event video that I do. I think the next one coming out is going to be a this or that video. So I've already taken questions for it on my Instagram, but if you have any other this or that requests specifically between Sephora products, then leave those down below in the comments. I'm gonna try and get to as many as I can and try and consolidate them as well as I can to like the most useful things that the most people are kind of asking for. Anyway, we're gonna do it topic by topic. I have three different bags here. Buckle in, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm going to talk about all of the products basically that like out of everything that I have tried on my channel ever. <laughs> These are the things that I recommend getting a discount on at the Sephora savings event if you so desire, if you are planning on shopping it. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I want to do hair and I basically went in my bathroom and like rated everything that I've been using lately that's just like sitting on my bathroom counter. That's what the first category is, khaki's bathroom counter. And it's pretty quick. And then we'll get into things that are like more real categories. But today, I really need to talk about Color Wow. This is not sponsored by Color Wow. I've just been so impressed with their products because if you, I mean, if you've existed on Instagram and you have any interest in beauty, I'm sure you've had this stuff marketed to you. The ads are everywhere and they're so enticing. They're just like, here's a girl with flat hair. Isn't she pretty? Here's a girl with massive hair. Isn't she beautiful? And I'm like, I want massive hair because I don't have a whole lot of hair and this really works. So I bought this first and it's a miracle. This is it's a lot to say, but it does feel like a miracle for people who have so little hair. So this is a style on steroids, performance enhancing texture and finishing spray. I think it's $28 or something, 24, something in that ballpark. It's Sephora reasonable. There's just a lot of hair product that we can make an excuse to pay a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money for, and you don't have to with this. This stuff is almost empty, but I will stick in, hmm, I'll see if I can pull the, it wasn't a reel that I did, but it was just on my stories, of like a demonstration and a before and after of when I used this, because it's bananas. It's such a good, a blend of a texturizing spray and a hairspray for people with fine hair because it's not oily, it's not heavy. It kind of builds this like soft scaffolding between your hair. You kind of toss it one way, pfft, toss it the other way, pfft, and it like makes this really lasting volume. It's not, it's not building bulk. It doesn't feel like your hair is like gritty and dirty, but it does feel kind of like you've had it styled with a really high quality texture spray. And then also with a really, really fine lightweight hairspray, but all in one step. And it results in less product on your hair and just more control because it's like all one step. It's really incredible and it doesn't weigh my hair down. It doesn't weigh my hair down, which is just miraculous. And then this is the other one. I got the small one because I wanted to try it and I like it so far. This is the extra large bombshell volumizer and it's a mousse that you put at your roots and you can apply it very liberally. It's not gonna gum your hair up and it just gives your roots the grip. And you can put it on to actually, I'm pretty sure I did it on like dry hair. And then you just use it to kind of like blow dry your roots again and it'll just build a ton of volume, which is great because it's a really low time investment. I think that one of the biggest things about Color Wow seems to be that it's like a stylist's friend, you know? Like I'm, I was a hairstylist for eight years. This seems very like stylist friendly in the sense that like you can use it liberally and it's not going to gum up the hair. Like it all feels very, very lightweight. So and it's all very restylable, which is fantastic. It doesn't like freeze your hair up. I want to try more things from Color Wow. They've got a lot of things for a lot of different textures of hair. There's one that's like super, super silkifying. Like I've seen some, you know, silk presses and stuff with their spray and it's bananas. It's so beautiful. So I just think that this is, it's, it's a winner for me. And the only other things that I grabbed off of my bathroom counter are the Kosas deodorant, which I can't recommend highly enough. My mother's a very discerning person. She's not into like textures that are weird. She has really sensitive skin and she doesn't like anything that smells like anything. And when I showed her this deodorant, she's, she's never looked back because it's clear. It uses AHAs. 
gnat. So the AHAs kind of keep your underarms chemically exfoliated and like it keeps you from getting that like dark pigmentation under your arms from like shaving and stuff. And it really works because it has mandelic acid in it. And I think another one, but I think it's mainly the mandelic acid that tends to be the active ingredient that actually keeps me from smelling bad, even if I sweat, because I'm gonna sweat, you know? So it's not an antiperspirant, you're gonna sweat, but you won't smell, which is great. And then, I don't know why more people don't talk about this product. This is the Dr. Jart Sycopare Tiger Grass Color Correcting Treatment, and it is one of the most brilliant products. Ooh, I, I just traveled with mine, and I think I didn't screw it all the way down. So, it starts out green, and you just, you know, pat it not, you don't have to use very much at all, on top of blemishes and things like that. And as you do so, yes, it will color correct, but also, it starts to go beige, which is kind of great. And like the longer you rub it, sort of the deeper it'll get. And so you just kind of work it until it works on your skin and it'll find its way somewhere between a color corrector and a concealer on you. I'll put it all over my whole face sometimes. The best part about it is it's super, super effective at being a color corrector, but it's also a mineral sunscreen and it's also a Sika treatment. Sika is short for Centella Asiatica, which is a wonderfully calming, anti-inflammatory, topical ingredient. I don't know, but it's like super relaxing for the skin. And so it's like you cover up a blemish with this, you're gonna get sunscreen, you're gonna get color correction, and you're going to get like calming. Why, why don't more people talk about this? <laughs> this is really good stuff. Okay, let's go into the wide world of fragrance, shall we? There will be timestamps. I have gone from being a casual fragrance appreciator and someone who thought that I should have like one signature scent for the rest of my life, like some kind of iconic Parisian woman, to being a person who has a fragrance Oh, wardrobe. I have so many moods and I just can't tell myself no with fragrances. So I just have a lot of them. And they're... <laughs> Everything is fine. Let's just talk about Fleur first. Fleur is a company, a fragrance company, a perfume company, a candle company also, that started in Austin. I lived in Austin at the time. I toured their facilities and everything. I got to meet everybody there. It was really awesome. Then I moved away. They had some turnover at the company, blah, blah, blah. And then they rebranded. And I will be honest, some of their scents before the rebrand were a little bit esoteric for me. Boy, do I feel like they have moved into an era of crowd pleasing because they're just good. Whatever they decide that they're going to set their mind to, they just do a great job at it. And the packaging with the rebrand has also been incredible. First of all, I don't know what I did with the vanilla one because vanilla skin is my actual favorite, but Amber Haze Mango Mood, when these are in stock, it's just a really good idea. These are the body sprays and, and don't think of it as like a, you know, Calgon take me away kind of situation. They're really classy and delicious. And I like to spray one on myself like right before I go to bed. It just makes me feel pretty. But it's also great because they're a little simpler in their fragrance notes. And so you can use them as a base and then kind of layer other things on top of them. I love to layer fragrances. And they are also, you know, because they're body sprays, they're a little less expensive than like a true like Eau de Parfum or whatever. So love those. Also been loving, this is what the, the lid I just tossed across the room, never to be seen again. This is Missing Person. This is one of their most popular fragrances and it took a while to grow on me because it's very subtle and it's a little bit kind of floral and hard to put your finger on, but like that's the point. It is supposed to smell like skin, like someone's skin. And I think that it's really incredible that they put it out in not just a fragrance oil, but also a body oil, because that's really what missing person is. I've talked about it a lot in the past, like how certain brands and certain fragrances translate better if they exist in both. They'll translate better to a candle or like a home fragrance versus a body fragrance. And this exists in both, but I really feel like this like an oil is the best delivery system for this fragrance because it's supposed to be close. It's supposed to be something that you that doesn't announce itself when you walk in the door. It's supposed to be something that only someone who's really close to you can smell. And if that also means that they're touching your skin, you know, that's just lovely. There's just something really, really intimate and, and delicious about that. So I just love that they did this. I think it was a really great kind of synergy of decisions. And then we have, I think the last three that they've put out. <laughs> Gotta talk about all of them, I'm sorry. So this is Father Figure. You can see I've been working my way through Father Figure pretty steadily. This is a perfume that you can spray all over yourself. There's something about it that just like, 
it's some as good as, and more is better, which is not the case with a lot of perfumes for me. I'm usually like, mm, that was too much, you know? So something about Father Figure. I have the, uh, the minis of all of these as well. Oh God, that's so good. I haven't worn it in a while because I have mood ring. <sighs> And mood ring has been taking center stage lately. It doesn't look like it because I've been using the mini. I've been using the one in my purse. But, God, father figure's so good. It's like fig notes, I believe. Oh no. Oh, it got ashes on it. It's, it fell into a candle in there. Story of my life. I'm a disaster. I was like, what's all over my hands? Like, soot. Fantastic. So yeah, father figure has fig notes. I encourage y'all to go look at the notes because I've been told I'm great at describing color, not so great at describing scent, but this is very unisex and lovely. I also really love the redesign on the packaging. The They've always, I think, had the really heavy caps, but I don't remember whether they were magnetic before. And it's gr I just think that this is a great, again, kind of like universally appealing shape that's not too fussy and it's also not particularly masculine or feminine fe feminine it's not particularly masculine or feminine and neither is this fragrance so i adore this and i love also the fact that like father figure it's supposed to be a little bit masculine smelling and so like a lot of people i've talked to have different names for it like a girl commented and said yeah not me going to sephora and asking for daddy issues <laughs> I love it. I love y'all so much. Okay, the next one. This is all in order of how they came out. So this is Mood Ring. Don't sleep on Mood Ring. Don't sleep on it. Someone was like, eh, it's kind of like jelly beans. Like they were almost like excusing it. They're like, I don't know if you're gonna like it kind of thing. It is if you took Fruity and just churched it up. Like she is just so cool and classic. I've gotten such great feedback on Mood Ring. I don't, again, what are the notes? Fruity. I don't know. It's not candy sweet though. Like it has, it's balanced. It's delightful. It's really right in between father figure in terms of like youthful intensity and the new one, which is strawberry letter. This one is strawberry. This one smells like a strawberry candy and I love it, but I want you to know that it smells like strawberry candy and you need to be prepared for that, okay? It's not like Tom Ford fragrance where they just kind of like are inspired by the idea of what they called it. You know, the cherry one kind of smells like cherry, but like the vanilla one, where's the vanilla? That doesn't smell like vanilla to me. $400 later, this is coming out, telling you what it is, it's strawberry. So it's very, very strawberry and it's absolutely delicious. Mm, 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 mm. I've been wearing it, it's just happy. There's something incredibly happy about it, really bright, really summery. And I would say that like, you know, if this is too, hmm, not woody, but like masculine smelling for you, and this is too bright and youthful smelling for you, Moodering is really right there in the middle. Moodering is so good, it's so good. It's so good. And they're all kind of like bright. They've all got like a tiny bit of some kind of, I don't know, citrus or something in them. And that's always the key to my heart. So big fan of Fleur, just big fan. Now let's talk about Replica because I have been a little bit on their gifting list, which has been fantastic. So I've gotten to try more things, but then I gosh darn bought some too. So let's first talk about from the garden. This took a while to grow on me. And I've said this before and I will say it again. I do think that while this one does work on the skin, I think some replica fragrances work better as room fragrances than they do human fragrances. And even though this one is lovely and I do wear it, it's got like notes of like tomato, earth and tomato leaves. I'm a huge tomato leaf scent fan I'm from, you know, I'm from Florida. My mom, my stepdad and my mom grow tomatoes. We love tomato leaves. This is delightful. This is lovely. It is not for everyone, but it's really, really nice. It kind of depends on how it's going to like mix with your chemistry, but this, the candle off the charts, off the charts. It's such a good candle. Oh, it's complex. It's a little bit smoky, but also bright and sophisticated and cheerful. It just smells like the beginning of spring to me. It's just lovely. It's earthy. It's phenomenal, like you see. The thing is, I had it sitting on my dining room table, unlit, and I would be sitting on my couch and I'd go, what does that smell? What is that? It's so nice. What is that? It took me forever to figure out it's the candle in the next room that's not even lit. That's how good the throw is, okay? And so I go in there and I light it and I'm like, oh my God, like what took me so long to fall in love with this candle? It is awesome. 
It's really, 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 really good. It's a, ugh, it's so pretty. It's just a really, really pretty smell for a candle. Oh, so I will say I am happy to stand corrected in the fact that not all replica fragrances are best or only good, I should say, as room fragrances. Some of them are incredible personal fragrances. Case in point, my new baby. Yes, I bought this with my own money. I know, it's, I get tons of stuff for free, but this stole my heart so much when I was in Sephora that I bought it for myself. I think it's $165 or something. This is matcha meditation. Oh my God. So Zen sense of matcha tea. I'm gonna just give myself a headache here, spraying all of these. Oh, oh, it's so good. It's green tea, but it's bright. Mm. It's so dead on. It's got some kind of white flower to it, like a tea flower. And then it's got a little note of citrus to it. Like you might put citrus in your tea, but it's still so floral. And then at the very end you go, oh, tea. It's like this earthiness at the end. This seems to just jive with my chemistry. I love it. I love it. And I'm just so happy. It just, it's, and it's so different for me. I don't know. I highly recommend. I highly recommend. Okay. I have an old baby, an old baby. That's weird. And uh, a new baby. So the old one is commodity gold. I am a vanilla girly through and through. This is one of my favorite vanilla. Well, this is actually kind of like my favorite vanilla scent that you can still get because I think that seven veils from by Rado is mostly vanilla, even though it's like, I don't know, it's like a woody vanilla, but nonetheless, you cannot buy it anymore. This you can still buy. This is one of the most delicious kind of like deep, sexy, sophisticated vanilla fragrances. It doesn't smell like, I don't know, Victoria's Secret vanilla lace, you know, which I have no objection to. I love me some vanilla lace all day long, but this is, this is sexy. And the cool thing about commodity is that they make things in spaces. So you can buy a fragrance from them in a small space, a medium space or a large space. Like, do you want it to be crazy bold and announce itself from the check cashing place around the corner? Or do you want it to be like discovered by your lover kind of thing? So I love that about it. And this one is my favorite from them. I've had a discovery set from them and they're all pretty lovely, but they're all kind of similar. Like, I feel like paper and milk and all the other ones are kind of similar. And then gold is just the standout. I just bit my tongue. We're moving on. And then finally, if anyone wants to buy this for me for my birthday, the full size, I'm all ears. Cause I'm like this close to doing it anyway. So this is the Valentino we made fun of. Well, I don't know if we made fun of this. We, we joked about it on Critical Sass when I was with Tom at their house and we you know, were able to film Critical Sass together, which is their uh, commenting on new makeup videos, new, new beauty video. And this is the Valentino Green Stravaganza. By the way, I'm gonna take a moment and say, Alessandro Michele got hired as creative director of Valentino. I'm very excited. I'm so excited about that. He's like my muse. Ugh, oh, love it. So anyway, excited to see what comes out of that fashion house now. But you know, I'm not like obviously burning through this at the speed of light, but I like it a lot. It's really delicious and lovely. I will say it's kind of like mood ring. Like they do smell very similar to me. And I, oh, I might get some controversy in the comments from people being like, what is your olfactory system doing? It is lying to you. They're nothing alike, whatever. But they do kind of have a very similar vibe to me, the Valentino Green Stravaganza and Mood Ring. And I don't, I don't really have a problem with that because Mood Ring is more of like a grounded fruitiness. And this one has a little bit more verdant to it and a touch, I want to say, of vanilla. Mmm. 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 I do, I need the full size and I'm really sorry to, I don't know who I'm apologizing to, but I need it, so. That's gonna be in my cart. When I do my this or that video, I'm going to also tell y'all what I have bought so far because I tend to make many orders during the Sephora sale. So this is actually already the result of one and the sale hadn't even started yet, so. Those are the fragrances, y'all. Oh my gosh. It does make me feel better though that there are perfumes that I don't like. Does that make sense? I realize I'm at least a discerning customer, even if there are a lot of things on the market that appeal to me. I consider myself lucky to be a person who can wear fragrance. Some people get migraines and just like literally it's a category that's off limits to them. I'm glad that like smelling things or smelling like things is even an option to me. Okay, and now everybody's 
favorite category. Let's talk about makeup. And this is gonna be in no particular order because I shoved them all into a bag. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, that's pretty much the format, okay? I will have loose systems so that you can kind of toggle between different parts of my videos. And honestly, that was a struggle even to get me to do that. People were like, can you put chapters in your videos? I was like, I don't want to, but I did. And I realized that it's helpful. But once you get within the chapters, I promise nothing. I've got clown blood. Anyway, just gonna go from the top here. Don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. Too many people are sleeping on this. This is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint. I have it in the shade two. This is one of the most phenomenal formulas, especially for the price. I think it's like low 30s maybe, something like that. She's jumpy. So incredibly gorgeous. It is a skin tint in the sense that it wears like a skin tint, but it has so much more coverage than a typical skin tint. And so it will make you feel so confident. My skin sucks right now. I do need coverage, but I don't want a foundation that's gonna like dry down and in an hour make me look like a sarcophagus. And this won't, it's really hydrating and beautiful and it wears so long. It wears so long. I shouldn't even say for a skin tint. It just wears a really long time. It is a foundation that looks like a skin tint basically. And it wears like a skin tint, but it's got as much coverage as a foundation. It's great, but it's not like It Cosmetics. I would say it's kind of like that. You know the It Cosmetics, the, what are they, that means like the CC cream. You're like, oh, it's a CC cream. That's a full coverage shellac foundation, but it has a really beautiful glycerin finish to it. This is like that cut in half. And if you've ever used any of Janessa Marks's other previous like liquid complexion products that she put out, like she had a really concentrated one right when she was starting out. And then she put out the yummy skin that was like still kind of a concentrate that you mix together with a primer to get, you know, your desired level of coverage. But it's like, they took that no fragrance, which is great. And also it's just thin enough that you can use it as is. You don't feel like you have to like manipulate it to get it to not be really, really high coverage. It's a brilliant product. Like when it came out, I was so excited that there was a Danessa Myricks complexion product that was designed specifically for me. And so my expectations were here and thank God the performance is right up there with it. I also want to talk about this real quick because I do love it. I don't really know where it falls into your routine necessarily, but the Kosa's BB Burst, I understand this looks like Maybelline. I do understand that or CoverGirl or whatever, but I really like it. If you like a really good dewy finish on a skin tint and it goes on really moussey. What is on my lips that's doing that? I think I just have concealer on my lips because I'm getting white ring of death and it's there was no white in what I put on my lips. So it's gotta be concealer. Apologies, past and future. Anyway, it goes on really hydrated and gorgeous. I do think that they flopped on the packaging, but it's still a really beautiful hydrating skin tint. It's very, very beautiful. I wish they would change the packaging, but it's awesome and I, I think it's worth it. Okay. Another Danessa Myricks product. I'm wearing this today. This is a skin savior, especially this time of year where I, like my skin has just forgotten what humidity or hydration is. It's like, that is a distant concept. I don't know if we'll ever see it again kind of thing. Like I'm all like dry under here and everything. Like I put this on before I put my makeup on and it gives my, my face and my skin something to like chew on. So I can just like put the rest of my makeup on and it doesn't just like soak it up instantly. So this is the Yummy Skin Moisture Repair Balm Serum. And that is exactly what she does. She has moisture, she has repair and she's a balm serum. It's beautiful stuff. It goes on really lightweight, really thin. And you, honestly, it's a skincare product. You can wear it at night. Like you're gonna sleep in it. It's really, really wonderful. It's like a barrier rebuilder. I love having that as part of my makeup routine because most barrier repair products, skincare products are not going to cooperate with makeup very well. And she's made one that cooperates with makeup really well. And I love it. If you are a person with dry skin, I always say this, but like you look at this yourself in the mirror when you wake up in the morning, you're like, how are we gonna get this done? How are we gonna make this happen today? This. This is how you're gonna make it happen. Next, this is very important to mention because they did finally get this at Sephora, but they also brought out the Glow Maximizer. So this is the Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. This is the one. Don't bother with the liquid highlighter, unless you're really into liquid highlighters. But since they came out at the same time as kind of a duo, this one just outshines, so to speak, the other one by so much. And of course the price point is not low. Just go with this. The entire experience is lovely. There's a great shade range on it. If you like a good illuminating serum base underneath your makeup, this is just gorgeous. It does remind me, if you have selenite from Auric, do not think that you need this because it's so similar. It is glowier, I think, but it's, it's absolutely beautiful. You hardly need any of it. 
it's really hydrating. It's a very, very good product. And I just want to say like, if you have your eye on both of them, or you're trying to choose between one or the other, because like I said, the prices are not just like negligible. This is the one. Okay. This is the one. I know that it is not cool to like Pat McGrath right now, but I will never stop standing her blushes. Okay. This is one of the best powder blush formulas on the market and that is it. I mean, I don't really know if there's any other superlative to assign to it. They're super finely milled. They go on beautifully slowly. This is the original one though. She did come out with like the, the duo colored ones and those are very, very vividly pigmented. It's not a bad thing. It's just like, they're different. So the single colors in the pan are like, they just go on in this really lovely, like seamless wash of color and you can layer them and it's just like, bleh, they're incredible. They're so good and they blur, ugh. Like I said, it's not cool to like Pat McGrath right now, but her blushes are still the best. Here's another blush that's phenomenally fantastic. And again, I'm pointing this out because it has so much company in its category, right? And a lot of times when we're looking at the Sephora savings event, we're just like, okay, I've been meaning to buy a product in this category and I need to narrow it down to the one that I want kind of thing. Cause there are so many of these vivid fluorescent blushes. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. new woman. There are so many of these vivid fluorescent blushes and impersonations of them and everything like that out there. But if you're looking for one that's in the luxury space, everybody came out with their own version of Rosy Glow. Rosy Glow got reformulated and it's not as good now. This is the one. The Givenchy Prism Libre blushes are the ones. Not only is this just the most incredibly beautiful color, it is such an incredible formula. The way that it goes on the skin is so blurring. It's so blurring. It has this luminosity to it, not a shimmer by any means, but just the most flattering. Oh, it's so finely milled. And look at that. It, it just becomes one with the skin. It's phenomenal stuff. It's really, really incredible. And they have tons of colors in it too, but the coral is my favorite obviously. Let's talk concealers real quick because there's no point in spending a ton of time on this because y'all already know which ones I recommend. You know, you can skip this if you already know. Tower 28, Swipe Concealer, $22, bomb.com. You don't have to powder it. It's hydrating, it's gorgeous, it's super lightweight. Kosa is going to be a little bit more blurring, a little bit more coverage, and it has caffeine in it. So does this one, but it's, uh, yeah, it's more coverage, a little creamier, you know, if you, if you want to call it that. And it's like the universal crowd placer as far as I'm concerned. Like if someone was like, I need a concealer, I'd be like, try Kosa's. You'll probably love it. Like there's a really good chance you're going to love it. It's kind of everything all at once. It does exactly what you expect it to do. It's really good. And it's a huge shade range. And then finally, mm -hmm. Yes, I'm still in love with this, okay? It's a great product. This is the Prism Libre Skin Care and Concealer from Givenchy. It came out, I think a year ago, and we all went absolutely cuckoo bananas for it because it's really, really good, especially for kind of maturing skin. It's very hydrating. And you know what? I didn't lose my love for it. I, I have several of them now actually because some lovely viewer put me in touch with a person that they knew at Givenchy and they sent me a bunch of stuff. And it was like backups of this. And I'm so grateful for that because I already finished one, I think. It's just great. And it is pretty well priced for a luxury product. They have raised the price by a couple bucks, but it's in the ballpark of $100 an ounce, which is low. Like that's low <laughs> for, for a concealer. And also it works beautifully as an all over foundation as well. I said we were gonna put something on my lips because I literally chewed it all off. So let's do this. I forget the filler from Lawless. This is something I have fallen back in love with. I ended up buying a clear one as well. So I have the clear, I have Nudie and I have George. They're just really, really good. They do fill in your lip kind of creases in a lovely way. And that's exactly what I want in a plumping lip gloss. I want my lips to look youthful and hydrated. Like that's the whole point. I love a super syrupy, glossy lip. And this does that. It's just really incredible. I love it. And it comes in a bunch of really, like they come out with a bunch of nuanced shades in it too. Like George. George is like this beautiful kind of cool, desaturated, mauve taupe. Ugh. Yeah, love to see it. And they're also well-priced for Sephora. Before we get off of the Givenchy Prism Libre, because we've talked about the blush, we talked about the concealer, I wanted to briefly, because I'm wearing this today, 
touch on the highlighter. I've tried a ton of things like this lately. A lot of liquid highlighters. Armani came out with one. Like I said, Dior came out with one. I love like the Chanel kind of primary one, but this is still the star. This thing's so good. And I have this in the, the rose, rose or rose, I think it's just rose shade. This is so easy to use, especially because it's so smoothing. It's so blurring. Like there's just something that's really, like it complements your skin. It makes things look better than before, <laughs> essentially. And it dries down, which is lovely. There are a lot of really beautiful balms out there that give you a really good wet look. This is a highlighter that dries down. And even on me with super, super dry skin, it has enough hydration to it because it is still a skin carrying highlighter that doesn't like then dry up, get crepey and look look weird. So I think that this is worth it. It's really lovely. Let's talk about a couple of foundations, like true honest to God foundations. We are not going to get out of this video without me talking about the Prada Reveal foundation, especially because you can buy it at Sephora now. I bought it off of Harrods and then I bought it off of Selfridges and then I bought it off of the Prada website. Like don't do any of those things. Well, I mean, if you're in the UK, do it. But if you're in the US, like don't just get it as a so that you can like, you know, actually return it if you need to because it's a huge shade range and everything. It's a very expensive product, but I had such a headache buying it and like getting the right shade for me and for Tom and things like that. So either way, I wear LN5. It does this. Wow. The inner component is glass. The outer component is plastic. Makes it easy to travel with. This is a foundation that to this day, and I have challenged y'all. I have challenged y'all in videos. I've been like, someone tell me. If you have a complaint about this, you'll be the first. You'll have the distinction of being the first one that tells me that they don't like this product and I will be curious to know why because it claims to be a matte foundation and it is absolutely glorious on me. It's a perfect natural finish on me. It is one of the most beautiful, crowd-pleasing, flexible, everything foundations that I have ever used. And I don't even think it's technically meant for my skin type. It's just great. And I don't know how they did it. But it's like, when something is perfect, we just don't ask questions. So in my eyes, this is the perfect foundation. And I'm really glad to be able to say that. Like, I found the perfect foundation, done. My, my job here is done. Now, what am I wearing today? Don't sleep on her. This has so much going for it. This is the Fenty Ease Drop Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. This is for people like me who have quite dry skin because it's a version of the Ease Drop that's very hydrating. It goes on the skin like really like blurring and smooth and hydrated instead of, I did love the original Ease Drop, but I couldn't wear it day on day on day. Y'all have heard me, I'm a broken record about it because it would like dry my skin out over time. This, it looks great every single day. And there's something really satisfying too about when you have like not great skin going on. This, I just, you know what I mean? And just like blend it with the biggest brush that I have. I have like the that gigantic BK 105. I literally blend it with this. I'm like pound, 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 pound. And that's it. Like this is the easiest foundation to apply ever. It's so good. If you can find your shade in it, I highly recommend it, especially if you have dry skin. So Let's just do a couple of compacts here. I can't get out of this without talking about the Gucci bronzer, especially in the fairest shade, because this is just an uncommon color for fair skin. It's quite rosy by comparison. It's like right in there with my natural undertones. My undertones are not rosy, but it looks like a natural tan on me. It's a very, you know, enhanced skin enhancing kind of tan and it's not gonna go orange. I mean, if you're super fair, maybe it'll go kind of too peach on you. Like if you have green undertones or something, but for people who are like neutral or warm and you're super fair, this is a really safe bronzer because it like almost leans blushy. It's awesome. It is scented, but like, I've had mine so long, it doesn't smell anymore. There's some beauty to that. Touch on this briefly. This is my powder of life. This is the only powder I use. Like, do I love other powders? Yes, but this is the only powder I end up using and it is the Kosas powder, okay? Cloud Set Airy is the shade that I wear and it's the best. It is not oil controlling. It is not for people with oily skin. You would be very disappointed with it if you wore it for that reason, but I wear it because it's not. I need powder sometimes to just change the texture and to like set quote unquote my makeup so that it's not creasing, but I don't want it to suck me dry and this doesn't. It's just a very wafty, ethereal kind of powder, which I love. The reason I paused for a second while I kind of held my finger up is because I'm wearing We'll move on to this next. Mid-Century from Merit in their solo shadow. Today on my eyes, like almost entirely. These are really similar. Let me show you. You can see it's kind of a rosy brown. So it's gonna be more intense than the bronzer, obviously, but blended out, because you do wear it typically pretty blended out. These are lovely formulas, by the way. The Merit eyeshadows are really, really wonderful. And this is honestly high praise because I think this is a really nuanced color. 
Yes. I mean, obviously the bronzer is more sheer. It's a lighter color, but they are the same undertone. That same kind of rosy brown. Ooh. Huh. So I love when things give me that like tonal tingle of when I can look at something and go, yes, those are the same color family. Because that means that like these two things, you know, if you put them on in the morning, they're going to make everything jive. They're going to make everything go together, which is really nice. So again, that was the Gucci Eclat Soleil in one, and then the Solo Shadow from Merit in mid-century. So this is actually a very rare all matte eye look for me. I did put a little something sparkly right on the inner corner, but you can barely even see it. It's because I love these so much and they truly are solo shadows in the sense that they don't need backup. They really don't. And I could have used like the deeper shades in it too to just kind of, you know, build the, I just tried to wipe it off. It just literally doesn't wipe off. It, they're really, really good. I slept on them for far too long and I, I genuinely really love them. I have four shades in them. I mean, look at that. It's beautiful. It's effortless. It's kind of sultry, blurring, long wearing, and the colors are really good. So Highly recommend, highly recommend the Merit Solo Shadows. Another eyeshadow recommendation because there aren't a lot of brands coming out with eyeshadows right now, but this one really excited me. These are the quads, the Couture Mini Clutch from YSL, hello. This one in particular really impressed me. I love 100, but this is 200. It's like this perfect rosy neutrals palette. So it's like when you, it can lean mauve if you want to put mauve blush on, but it can also lean rosy if you want to put rosy blush on. It's a really versatile color story. And that shimmer is a lot more exciting than you give it credit for. I mean, obviously I'm not like an indie multi-chrome girly. I'm just not, it confuses my color spidey senses. It just makes my brain fritz. But for people who want one that's a little exciting, a little bit of excitement, it has a shift. It's got a little bit of pink in it, a little bit of gold. It's more exciting than you want to give it credit for. And it works great as a topper, but you can also use it as like a inner corner highlight or brow highlight or whatever. This is a really lovely formula. It's just high quality. It all feels like luxury. I think that these are a home run. All right, I do have to talk about this because I love it so much and I've been a broken record about it. CL has put a few things out now. I'm on the fence about the bronzers. I'm pretty impressed with them, but I need to like see how other people are kind of vibing with the entire shade range because I'm only using one shade. But the foundation, the Tint and Protect Tinted Serum SPF 50, this is one of the most sophisticated skin tints I've ever used. It's so beautiful. Lighter, coverage soupier in general than the Danessa Myrex and more like this is more smoothing and this is more blurring. Does that make sense? You can't go wrong really. The main thing here is that this has SPF 50 in it if that's important to you, mineral SPF 50 and none of the other ones that I've talked about do. It's beautiful. It has a really cool kind of delivery system the way that it's packaged and everything. Great shade range. It wears like a makeup. It wears all day beautifully like a makeup. It can tolerate powder. It's just a phenomenal skin tint. It's like really easy to underestimate this stuff. An oldie but a goodie. We need to talk about this because I've been wearing it constantly as we've been moving into a little bit warmer weather, a little bit more of me wanting to have a little sunshine on my face kind of thing. The Makeup by Mario, the Cream Skin Enhancer, the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. Be aware of what this is. A lot of people get disappointed because they're like, that's not really a bronzer. It's not. He doesn't claim that it's a bronzer. It is a skin enhancer. It is a gel. It's a very sheer, beautiful gel. I find that what it does is bring your skin tone up in dimension with a beautiful kind of natural warmth from when you have put on a complexion product that's all one color. So is it going to be a change your skin tone, make you look like you've been out in the sun and like, you know, your quote unquote sun kissed bronzer? It's not going to do that. It's gonna make your skin look naturally healthy. It's truly a skin enhancer. And like for some people, there's no place in the routine for that. But for me, I want everything to be so seamless. This is seamless. Like this has a, a very important role, especially as I do get into wanting to wear more bronzer in the warmer months. This is gonna bridge the gap so that I never end up having thick lines of demarcation and stuff or things that your eyes immediately go to. And honestly, you can wear it just alone, like, or just, I mean, obviously on top of a foundation product or something like that, but like it's, extremely flattering. You just can't apply too much. It's it's just a really forgiving, beautiful, bronzer-esque kind of like, you know, gel tint product. I love it. It's way better to me than like in use case, use value, than any of the like bronzy drops. 
Like this makes so much more sense to me than that. Another oldie but goodie that, I mean, honestly, it just belongs in rotation because I have to admit when Charlotte Tilbury really nails it and she really nailed it with this one. I mean, we all talked about how annoyed we were about how great these are. Like that's how you know. The Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wands they're just really, really good. They're super easy to use. You can actually just like pound them right on your face, blend them out with like a brush, and they work somehow. I don't under, they're like a trick deck of cards. I don't understand how they do what they do, but they work really beautifully. I have the peach one here that's gonna be a lot more saturated, but still, you know, incredibly beautiful, and it's gonna be, you know, more accommodating for deeper skin tones. And then the original, like the pillow talk shade, if you are medium to deep skin toned sentence, don't do this. It's gonna go gray on you. It's really, really desaturated, like more than you're expecting it to be because you look at it, at it on me and you're like, Kaki, that's rosy. I'm so pale. I'm so pale. I've heard so many comments from people being like, I have like just like medium olive skin and that looks like gravender on me, you know what I mean? Like it's just like a really unflattering sort of like concrete color on some people's skin. But if you're looking for something that, you know, all other blushes are too pink or too much on you, mm, it's so good. But I mean, you know, you look at like the coral one and they have they have other shades too, but like the coral one, that everybody can wear that. I have to be a little careful wearing it, but it's not going to turn a, a, like a gross chalky color on someone. I just, be aware, be aware that the, the one that I'm obsessed with is, it's because it's specifically for very fair skin. Oh, another Charlotte Tilbury product I have to talk about, and I always have to couch this in the caveat that I think that it is extremely rude that she does not make this in a mini in both shades. It's stupid because I've had this for like a year and a half, two years, something like that. I bought it at one of the Sephora events. As you can see, A, it's a duo and I never use the highlighter. Whatever, I don't care. But B, this is the mini and I'll never finish it. You don't need the full size. This is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. This is my favorite contour. It's really, really forgiving because it's not that gray and I can just kind of, I don't know, it's a little bit more mindless and it's still effective, but it's just so silly that she has the medium deep one only in the large size and then the mini in, like you only need the mini. But if you have deep skin, you can't buy a mini. And I mentioned this product mainly to call that out, honestly, because it is that good. All right, a few more blushes here. We're getting down to, we're getting down to the last little ones. You know, we're in the home stretch. Merit, this is the Flush Balm Cheek Color in Mood. I freaking love this stuff. I love this color. This is a one and done blush. I love to layer blushes, but especially in the winter time, like that's Fjords all in one. It wears all day. It's a really pretty kind of, it's not a hybrid, I wouldn't say, but it's not so balmy that it slips around. So it's got like a nice level of like healthy hydration and a good balance of the amount of pigment in it. But the main thing for me with these is that I really feel like the colors are dead on. I also really like the delivery system. It doesn't bother me at all. Some people it's like polarizing, but like it doesn't bother me. It's like a pot. You're used to having a pot of blush, but this you can do, 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 do right on the face. So I don't know. I really like these. All right, I pulled all these out because why not? I don't know what it is about these y'all, but they stole my heart. And it is my job to know what it is about them that stole my heart. So let me dig deep here. These are the Bosma cream blushes. And you know what? I just think that a lot of brands overcomplicate it. There are brands out there that overcomplicate it and they have not overcomplicated it here. For a small release, they came off some great colors that are a little bit off the beaten path, but they're still, you know, quite wearable. You can find something that you like in them. The main thing that I really enjoy about these colors is that they have gone and done some desaturated shades for fair skin tones. And then they've also made some really intensely pigmented ones for deep skin tones, you know, for the, the people who want more intensity and don't want it to go ashy. And I just think that, you know, that consideration is, is very commendable and the formula is really, really lovely. And I also think it's abundant. There's something really nice about the size of this pan. There are some at Sephora that I feel like I'm like, that's a nice formula, but like, why did you give me a teaspoon of it? You know? So this is just kind of a home run to me altogether. I think that they're just a love, it's like a lovely, easy thing to like. And like some Sometimes that's all you need in a makeup item is that if you buy it, you're going to like it. <laughs> you know, If you buy it, you're gonna, it's like, it's not going to completely change your life, but like, it's going to be a blush that you use all the way up because it just makes your life easier. It gets the job done and it makes your life easier. And that's what these do. And I love them. You're not going to get out of a Sephora recommendations video without hearing about a Kaja trio. This is orange blossom and it contains, look at that divot. It contains my favorite bedroom eyes brown. 
It's so perfect. Me and my friend Sam Torti, she works at uh, Funny Ferdinand. We just like went off one day talking about this particular color, just telling everyone how great it is. We're like, no, 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 you don't understand. The brown and orange blossom specifically. Yeah, it's just like the brown, the sun-kissed, gorgeous brown that doesn't have too much coolness to it. It's the best. And the shades in here are also like, I still use all of these because I love a coral eye look and that's a fantastic, like that version of that color, because this color exists a lot of places. That kind of pink gold shift, I mean, it's like NARS orgasm, right? But this is a better version of it than I've seen in a lot of places. And then this one is just so delightful. It's like this really pretty ethereal kind of like ballerina peach. Orange Blossom is the one. Something else that's really great, and honestly, these are just some of the singles that I love and I think I talk about every single time, but the Moon Dust from Urban Decay, Space Cowboy and Lithium are my favorites that are at Sephora. Diamond Dog is not at Sephora. I don't even think it's at Ulta. It's literally, I think, a site exclusive right now at Urban Decay, but I did buy it. And so I figured I would swatch them next to each other for y'all because they're very similar and it might help you kind of decide maybe lithium's the one for you anyway. So this is lithium. It's got a little bit more nuance to the shift and it's a little like, so it's the disparity, the difference between the base shade and the shift are large, it's larger. Does that make sense? Than Diamond Dog. So Diamond Dog has like a deep kind of brownie taupe and then like a taupe shimmer. And then Diamond Dog has like a red brown and then kind of like a greenish shimmer. It's not super green, it's not like ethereal green, but it does have some green to it. It's like a green bronze. So I love them both. I will say in practical application, lithium is far more intense. It just is. You can wear it less intense, but you get more intensity just right out of the gate out of lithium than you do with Diamond Dog. And then the other one, I mean, God, I keep buying one of these. Like every single time there's a Sephora savings event, I just buy another one, I guess. But this is the Scattered Light from Hourglass. And this happens to be in the shade Smoke. Oh, goodness gracious, she's pretty. Wow, 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 wow. I'll actually swatch this against Oyster Pearl. You know, everybody wants to compare everything to Oyster Pearl. So this is Oyster Pearl from Charlotte Tilbury. I don't love this formula. I have seen it work really beautiful, beautifully on some people because they'll take the time to wear a primer with it or something. And it's very, very pretty, it is, I will give you that. But there you have smoke right next to it. It's a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit peacher. It just has a little less shimmer to it. Like this is a much more consistent metallic. So you're gonna see a little bit more of that metallic reflection. This one's a scattered light formula. So it's gonna be a little more spangly with a little bit more of the base pigment visible, but they're extremely similar, just different finishes. So I love the scattered light. Like I can almost always make an excuse to put scattered light on. Today I didn't. I stopped myself, I was like, I'm going to have a matte eye look by God, and I did. But yeah, I mean, when it comes to like me standing there going, I don't know, what does it need? It usually needs ray, blaze, or smoke. I get excited about those. Oh, I wanna mention this really quick. This is the Coolfee Free The Brow. I've been really loving this. I've typically always used the Kosa's Airbrow, which you know I obviously recommend, I'll link it below. And I've been using the soft brown in that and also the clear ones that dries to just kind of you know fluff them up and everything. It's an Amanda Z trick. This is really great. It's got more hold and it gives a little bit more of like a lamination effect option. You don't have to do the lamination effect and it's not gonna just shellac your brows down, but I love to have that option without having any crustiness. There's never any like flaky white stuff in my eyebrows, there's no risk. This is a really good product and you have the little tool on the other side, which is nice. If you're like a brow girly and you want to have some options, this one really gives you options. Uh-oh. <laughs> This is the new Glossier Cloud Paint Bronzer in Sale. Sale. I adore this. It's the other bronzer that I'm wearing today besides the Makeup by Mario, and it made me fall back in love with Cloud Paint. It's a phenomenal formula. I do recommend, if you have a difficult undertone, like a really kind of, I don't know, like an olive undertone or something, where it's like bronzers tend to do something bananas on you, like they look normal in the pan and then they do something really crazy on your skin. I would recommend swatching the third shade. I don't remember what it's called, but I was in Sephora with my friend Rebecca and she has that 
kind of, I mean, it's not super, super pale. She's like very similar to me in like skin tone, but her undertone is green. Her undertone is olive. And she tried the third shade, which you would think would be too deep, but they have had the courage to make it really olive. And I highly recommend trying it if you have an olive skin tone. It's a very rare shade, so check it out. A couple of Sephora collection things. I've just been so overwhelmingly impressed with Sephora collection. One of them is the powder contour. I use this all the time. I think it's just really lovely, especially because yes, it does come in some less scary colors than this like pure gray, but I have to swatch the heck out of that to get that much pigment out of it. It's a really sheer formula. Like they've made it really intelligent. So like as that goes on my skin, it builds a believable shadow without giving me any kind of like ashy stripe. If you're someone who is a little more adventurous and you know, you think that you're ready to try like a true shadow contour on fair skin, I recommend this. It's really lovely. This is a crowd pleaser though. I have absolutely no caveats in recommending this because it's a fantastic eyeliner. It's a fantastic formula. And then I also happen to really like this color. I use this constantly. I reach for it more than anything else in my collection right now. It's just one of those things that every time I think I'm just like, oh, I'm just gonna use tiramisu. Tiramisu in their 12 hour colorful contour eye pencil. I had to read that upside down, sorry. The thing that I like about this is that it's not about the colors in my makeup look, it's the fact that that's the color of my eyelashes. It's like a cool deep brown, not black and not warm brown either. That's the color of my eyelashes. And so it's the whole point of eyeliner to me is to give the illusion of thicker eyelashes. I mean, obviously you can play with eyeliner. It's just another place to put color if you want to. But if I'm trying to enhance my eyelashes, I don't want to use black. Black looks severe on me. I have a very low contrast complexion. That's why you don't see me wearing a lot of like bright lipsticks or really high, highly saturated anything. And something that can kill a look so fast for me is a really high contrast eyeliner. Like a liquid eyeliner of any kind usually, but especially black. Black mascara, I can get away with, but like a black eyeliner, game over. It just looks, it's the only thing you see on my face. And so I have to go with a brown, but there are so many brown eyeliners out there. And this one's just the one. Like it's just the one that knocked my socks off. And I kind of want to show y'all because this is obviously like this is not at the Sephora. It's just not at Sephora. But this is my typical brown mascara. And actually YSL just sent me their brown lash clash. But like look at this. This is the Thrive and it's brown black. And they're the same color. Look at that. That's why. It's because brown is as effective as black on me, whereas black would be like overkill. That's gonna give me the illusion of thicker eyelashes and it makes all the difference in the world. And I mean, I think it's $11, I don't know, it's somewhere in there. It's just great. I cannot recommend this enough. It's so good. Oh, also, there are eyeshadow sticks. I don't have one out right now, but the shade Espresso is the exact same color as this. So if you're looking for this color in an eyeshadow, get that. It's very, very good. And then we just have a handful of lip products that are not gonna surprise anybody at all. One is the New House Labs. I really can't say enough about this stuff. It is just kind of a perfect product. No fragrance, sting-free plumping. I haven't noticed anything. Like, fine, great, w wonderful. If you're plumping and I don't notice it, that's fantastic. And the Colors do the colors. They're so grungy. They're so informed. They're so nuanced and beautiful, but they're also not milky. So anybody can wear them. They're really, really beautiful. This is Coco. There are a lot of shades in it, but it is the like grungy brownie ones that truly interested me and Coco like mm, satisfied that appetite. So good. I know, I know, I know. People are gonna be like, didn't that like give you like an ambisole numbing to your lips? You know what? Maybe a little bit, or maybe I was having some kind of break with reality. I'm not really sure. This is the new Armani Prisma glass and I like it a lot. Here's why I like it. Cause I'm comparing it against a lot of other luxury lip glosses that do the same things-ish and are the same colors, which is, this is one of my favorite colors to wear. So like the Hermes, the Givenchy, the uh, Victoria Beckham, the La Mer, that's $90 so that I had enough brain today to not get on here and recommend it to you. Even though I wear it constantly, I'm not stupid. Now, if you want 20% off, I mean, I guess, but I mean, like, you're still already spending way too much money. It's just too much money. It's too much money for a lip gloss. Either way, this does not have a fragrance, which the Hermes does. This has a plumping quality, which a lot of them don't. This does not have a really nasty flavor to it, which the Givenchy does. This is not super milky, like the Victoria Beckham is, and it actually has pigment to it, which the La Mer does not. It looks like it does, but it doesn't. It is unabashedly orange, which I love. I mean, not orange, orange, but like, 
that's an orange coral. That's not a pink coral. And it's got a really nice little bit of like shimmer in it, hence the Prisma glass, I guess. This right here is the Givenchy, which is so beautiful and a very similar color. It's a little bit pinker, but it's a very, very similar color, but the smell isn't even bad, it's the taste. It tastes so bad. I'm like, why'd you make something taste that bad if I'm supposed to put it on my mouth? It's a perfectly reasonable question because at least the Le Mer tastes a little bit sweet. Like it's not meant to be like, you know, lip smacker licked off your lips, you know, like tastes like candy, but it's not unpleasant at all. And I like the plumping quality to it. I wish it just had a little more color, but this is right squarely in the middle of everything that I want to recommend in a luxury lip gloss. The color is great. The formula is really nice, really tenacious. There's no fragrance or flavor to it. And the plumping is completely unoffensive. So yeah, I do. I really like this. I can't wait to get more of them. You didn't think you were gonna get out of a recommendations video without hearing about YSL candy glaze, did you? No, no. They did just reformulate and come out with the Love Shines. I did a reel uh, swatching five shades of the Love Shines and I really like them, but I will never love anything as much as I love the candy glaze formula. Now, this is not the shade that I typically wear. I am an absolute, you know what, for the clear, okay? This is uh, 14, which I think is... Oh, whatever it is, it's the brown one. It's beautiful, it's really beautiful. This is one I bought for Tom and they love it and it's really, really beautiful. It's like a rosy, mauvey, cool brown and they do have kind of a warmer brown and it's beautiful, 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 but it's very much a lipstick. I would love to see them come out with some more sheer colors. So like take the Love Shine idea and come out with some of those colors in the Candy Glaze formula because the Love Shine is a lip oil, the Candy Glaze is a lip gloss and I like a lip gloss. And so I love shade two, which is just their kind of pinky clear. Never has there been a sexier lip, never. It's just the most perfect gloss. I burn through them. I love them so much. And I mean, if you like them too, and you can get a little bit of a discount on them, that's a pretty good time to do that. So. Wow, y'all, that's my spiel. I've been filming for over an hour and my back hurts and I'm hungry. But I hope that this was valuable for y'all. This is not like, this is not the last video that we're gonna do talking about the Sephora Savings event. I have a this or that coming up. We'll probably do an emergency reviews where I try and get things in under the buzzer to make sure that y'all you know, know about some of the products that I've been trying lately that I haven't gotten a chance to give you final thoughts on yet. And maybe we'll do a haul. I don't know if we get, if we have time, you know, before the event's actually over. But probably not. I'm gonna tell you as I go, like in each video, I'm gonna tell you like what I've ordered and then they'll just be on my channel. If that sounds good to you, subscribe while you're here. If you enjoyed this, please give the video a thumbs up. I really appreciate that from y'all. And I thank you to my current subscribers. Y'all are the absolute best. I love you so much. I'll put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy if you liked this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.